convocation, a word de derived from the Latin convocare, to call together. Many colleges around the country open their academic year with a convocation, a special academic ceremony. At Albright, our convocation is a true calling together of members of our community who have gathered here today to welcome you, to welcome you, our new students, into our vibrant liberal arts learning community. This ceremony is designed to orient you to the history and values of Albright College and to introduce you to many of the people who make Albright such a thriving and thoughtful community. These colleagues who have joined me on stage this morning represent our diverse resources at Albright. They are just a few of the many people who will support you and guide you in ways both seen and unseen as you embark on and continue on your educational journey with us. Listen attentively to their names and responsibilities, holding your applause, and look for their faces on campus in the days ahead because they are eager to greet you as we all are. Allison Burke, director of the Shumo Center. Alexis Janofsky, class of 2017, artistic director of the Domino Players. Amanda Hanacek, class of 2000, assistant dean of students. Andrew Dell, help desk analyst, information technology services. Blake Tobias, class of 17, president of the Student Government Association. Brenda Ingram Wallace, associate professor of psychology and director of the Counseling Center. Chris Hanlon, director of financial aid. Deborah McCreary, vice president for advancement. Don Kaufman, public safety officer. Gina Krantz, vice president for student affairs and dean of students. Greg Fulmer, Vice President for Administrative and Financial Services. Hillary Bentman, Manager of News and New Media College Relations. Irene Langren, Chair and Associate Professor of Political Science. Janice Luck, Director of Athletics and Head Women's Basketball Coach. Jennifer Williamson, Director of Admission. Joe Thomas, Associate Provost and Dean for Academic Affairs. John Pankratz, so, professor of History and Director of Experience Events. Josia Stipenia. <laughs> Josia Stipenia, Class of 2018 Admissions Ambassador. Julia Matthews, Interim Associate Dean for Academic Success and Associate Professor of Theater. <clears throat> Karen Campbell, P. Kenneth Nace Professor of Biology and Chair of the Faculty. Karen Evans, Assistant Dean of Experiential Learning and Director of Career Development. Karen Moran, Director of Alumni Relations. Kathleen Sutton, Director of the Fund for Albright. Lana Hoffler, Executive Secretary and Scheduler to President McMillan, Accelerated Degree Program, Class of 2017. Matt Fotis, Assistant Professor of Theater and Director of Undergraduate Research. Mike Miller, Catering Manager, Dining Services. <laughs> Nathan Schaefer, Service Response Coordinator, Facilities. Paul Kramer, Class of 1988, Vice President for Enrollment Management. Rachel Liberatore, Director of the Writing Center. Rebecca Lemmel, Director of the Academic Learning Center. Rob Seasongood, Chair and Associate Professor of Religious Studies and Coordinator of the First Year Seminar Program. Samantha Westner, Assistant Dean of Students and Director of the Health Center. Sarah Baum, Circulation Technician, Gingrich Library and Class of 2015. Tiffany Clayton, Coordinator of Multicultural Programs and Interim Director of the Office of Student Involvement and Leadership. Tim Moran, Director of Residential Life. Eureka Beeman, Director of Disability Services. And representing our longest serving faculty, Frida Texter, class of 1972 and professor of biology in her 39th year here at Albright. Also, all...
Also, Archie Perrin, professor of art history and German, who began at Albright in 1979, who had the honor of leading our procession with the Albright Mace. Representing our part-time faculty, Tom Blakely, adjunct instructor in anthropology. And representing our newest full-time faculty, of whom we have 18 joining us this year, coming in new just like many of you students, Carlos Dimas, assistant professor of history and Latin American studies. Representing our Board of Trustees, who are diligent and devoted stewards of Albright College, are Chris Creras, class of 1969, Ron Sheesh, class of 1983, George Shirer, MD, class of 1985. Thank you for your stewardship. And lastly, it is my great pleasure to introduce the 14th president of Albright College, Dr. Lex O. McMillan III, who has served Albright since May 2005, a true guiding light who has brightened and strengthened Albright College so that generations of students might thrive here. President McMillan. Good morning. Good morning. Pretty good. Welcome to you all. I'm delighted to welcome all of our new students both our freshmen freshly out of high school, as well as transfers and others who've already had a bit more educational and life experience. You join us in the 161st year of our beloved Albright. We trace our beginnings to the founding of Union Seminary in 1856 in New Berlin, Pennsylvania, Union County. If you don't know where that is, don't feel bad because it's a teensy weensy little town of about 800 people. I wonder what kind of a thriving metropolis it might have become if Albright had stayed there. Um, it's located just west of the Susquehanna River, a good deal west of here, near Lewisburg, near Sunbury, near Sealands Grove. Um, the present Albright College was formed by a series of mergers with other institutions of higher learning, all founded in the 19th century by the Evangelical Association and its successor, the, Evangel the United Evangelical Church. Jacob Albright, after whom the college is named, was a Pennsylvania German evangelical preacher who started out as a roofer, or tiler as they called him in those days. He was a young Revolutionary War veteran um, and the founder of the Evangelical Association, later, which later became the Evangelical United Brethren Church. And don't even try to keep up with it. I have to have a flow chart to keep up with the, uh, the evolution of, of the church. But uh, it's a uh, complicated and interesting history that reflects the history and the emergence and development of main social uh, uh, currents uh, in uh, 19th century American development. In 1968, the church that Albright founded, that is Jacob Albright, or properly Jakob Albrecht, he probably never pronounced his name Albright, um, found uh, the church that he founded uh, merged with the Methodist church to form today's United Methodist Church. Both these denominations were influenced by the writings and the thinking and the teaching of John Wesley, the great 18th century English clergyman and Oxford scholar, who with his brother Charles and others launched the movement, the reform movement that came to be called Methodism. In addition to their, doubt, uh, their devout faith, John, his devout faith, John Wesley believed deeply in the power and value of higher education. He was after all an Oxford professor. Albright College remains affiliated with United Methodist Church to this day, and we retain, uh, woven into our values, the Wesleyan commitment to serve the poor, to disciplined liberty, to learning, and to giving glory to God through developing one's talents and serving others. So that's a brief look into our past. You, our newest Albrightians, represent our present and our future. So here's a little bit about you. There are some 612 or 13, we're still counting, and a few are missing, but uh, it'll, it'll settle down in the next few days, no doubt, as it always does. You are, uh, as freshmen, the second largest class in Albright's history, and we're delighted about that. We're also welcoming, welcoming some 41, 42, 43 transfer students. Again, a moving number that'll settle down in the next couple of days, and we're delighted to have you with us as well. You represent uh, 22 states from as far away as California, Oregon, South Dakota and Texas. Several foreign countries are also represented, including China, Ghana, Japan, and Vietnam. We also have international exchange students from France, Japan, North, Northern Ireland, and South Korea. 
Nearly 50% of you enrich us through your ethnic and racial diversity, but I can assure you that your wide range of gifts, tastes, talents, and experiences also enrich our diverse community, and we celebrate that. Nine of you have parents who attended Albright. I met several of you uh, in, the, in the line yesterday. I was delighted to see folks with mom, dad, brother, sister, and new student all in Albright gear. Very proud they wear their colors. 17 of you received Albright grants for your talents in art, music, journalism, and theater. 22 are Founders Scholars in recognition of your outstanding academic achievement and promise. Most of the Founders Scholars graduated in the top 5% of their high school classes. And 20 of you are Shirk Scholars, you know who you are and you'll make your mark. Graduates of our local area high schools and transfers from the Reading Area Community College who have demonstrated leadership, a commitment to community service, and academic strength. All Shirk Scholars accept a commitment to provide not less than 25 hours of community service each semester. These scholarships honor the memory of the late Eugene L. Shirk, long-serving professor and coach and former two-term mayor of Reading. His name is on our stadium. That's the Shirk that it's named for. Um, doesn't have anything to do with shirking duty. So just a kind of a funny pun. Um, Gene Shirk was a remarkable man. I hope some of you learned about him. He lived into his 90s uh, and, and was uh, forever young and loved young people and loved being here at the college and tragically died. Uh, uh, he was struck by an automobile. Um, he, he didn't die of natural causes in, in his 90s, but uh, made a great impact here. Each year we survey our recent graduates, and one of the questions we always ask is what do they wish we emphasize more in their learning? Invariably, the answer given most often is, quote, developing skills valuable in the workplace. So what are those skills? We've done a lot of research on this. What do people want? What do employers say they want in the workplace? They want people who are capable of critical thinking, people who have a global perspective, people who have the ability to work in teams, people with strong writing and speaking abilities, people who are adaptable to change. In other words, the employers tell us that what they want is exactly what we provide, the kinds of outcomes an Albright education produces. Employers don't want college graduates who are better widget makers or bean counters. They want clear communicators and analytical thinkers. They want graduates who can connect the dots. And how do our alumni rate us in these areas? Quite highly, as a matter of fact, year after year. During your time here, you will learn, as they have, to connect the dots through your reading, your writing, your classes, your performances, your participation in this very special community. You will acquire those skills valuable in the workplace, I assure you. These outcomes are the direct results of a liberal arts education, of the kind of education you will receive here. So why do our recent graduates have trouble realizing that their Albright education has done what they wanted it to do? Perhaps because we've done a poor job of connecting the dots ourselves and simply reminding them that this is what people tell us they want in the workplace, employers. And I'm challenging the faculty to periodically remind our students that that's what they're getting. You know, if they start worrying about what am I gonna do with an English major? Well, actually my first job was a desk clerk at a day's end at which I was offered a wonderful career opportunity. I sometimes wonder what that might have turned out to be. But instead, I turned out to be um, a uh, college president. And I was an English major. So, um, so much for digressing. Now I've lost my place. <laughs> we need for you to realize, we need for everyone to realize that a liberal arts education is, in fact, the most practical one you can get because it prepares you for a world of constant change with the skills and aptitudes that employers, not just us, that employers say they want. Doesn't wear out, doesn't go out of date, no, kind, no one can ever take it away from you. It's not the same as job training, and you'll see billboards about job training, and instant employment. If you want job training that will lead immediately to a narrowly defined job that's likely to be superseded by technology within five or fewer years, you're in the wrong place. This is an education not necessarily for your first job or a job after that, but for every job you'll ever have. It's an education not just for working, but for living. 
It is an education for a lifetime and for a life well lived. According to a recent Gallup Purdue University report, college graduates who had the kind of supportive and caring learning experience that is the hallmark of an Albright education were much more likely to be engaged in and satisfied uh, with their work. Our graduates outperformed the national sample impressively in the six identified areas. These include mentors who encourage you to pursue your dreams, who care about you as a person, and who, are ex who excited you about learning. The other factors are internships and other kinds of experiential learning opportunities, semester-long research projects, and being actively engaged in extracurricular activities. I hope all that sounds pretty familiar. I strongly encourage you to take advantage of the many opportunities you'll have during your time here. You'll never have another experience like it in the rest of your life. Discover the new things about yourself and about the world. Connect your own dots. Good luck, and again, welcome.